What about emotional dysregulation specifically in ADHD individuals? So do these medications actually help emotional dysregulation? If you see emotional dysregulation as a symptom of ADHD, you probably would intuitively conclude that it helps, but you want research to show that. So again, 24-week trial, 360 patients on extended release methylphenidate, Methylphenidate ER was significantly more effective than placebo in treating emotional symptoms. That is, you give these folks stimulants and their emotional tone diminishes, their reactivity diminishes, their sense of frustration diminishes. Particularly important because this is a long trial of six months with a large number of patients. So it's a pretty convincing finding. But we have the, the issue of psychosis. So this is a very large meta-analysis, 49 RCTs in ADHD. The cumulative incident of psychosis for, or mania was 1.5. And you'll remember Dr. Citrone's lecture on NNH, number needed to harm, is 526. Which means the likelihood that you're gonna harm anyone by adding your stimulant medications and inducing psychosis is probably infrequent. Having said that, I have had patients who have become psychotic on stimulant medications, whether they were taking too much or just taking higher doses that I was prescribing. So people will develop psychosis on stimulant medications and just be mindful. The development of that is not acute. It's not like it develops in 24 hours. It is very slow and insidious, and it starts off with suspicions. You start thinking that this is a personality perspective. Then it goes into the FBI is monitoring me, and the government is monitoring me. Remember when, when schizophrenics were defined by the people with tin aluminum foil on their, on their heads, and they said the government is monitoring me? You know what? The government is monitoring you. That's a reality these days. So you can't use that as the definition of psychosis. <laughs> what about non-stimulants, atomoxetine and emotional dysregulation? So this is a post-hoc of two randomized trials at uh, looking at adults with ED. ED stands for emotional dysregulation. And I was counseled from the family feud not to make sexual jokes in a large auditorium. So these were patients who had more severe ADHD symptoms. Uh, they had a greater global cognitive impairment. They had high levels of anxiety and depression. And what did the study find? ADHD individuals with emotional dysregulation displayed significant improvement with atomoxetine on emotional symptoms, as well as the core symptoms of ADHD. So treating ADHD, however you choose to treat it with medication, is going to be helpful in reducing the emotional tone, frustration, et cetera. It's an important element of, of ADHD that has not yet gotten into the DSM, hopefully in the DSM-6 in two to three years from now. There'll be enough research to demonstrate this should be an included diagnostic uh, category. Again, there are other studies that have looked at this. This looks at a pooled data analysis of three randomized studies and the atomoxetine was more effective. The effect size was 0 0.19, but if you just stripped out those who had more severe emotional dysregulation, the effect size moved up to, to 0 0.3. So when you look at effect size, you have to look at what the population was that they looked at. You can dilute your finding with a large number of people and a large distribution in the population. But if you segment that population and look at the more severe, you often find that your effect sizes actually move up, which, by the way, is the problem with meta-analysis. Because if you use large meta-analysis and you include studies where the subjects were underdosed and effect size was small, you dilute the finding of the meta-analysis.